bookish besties welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is Liv if you're new here and that's right we are going to be doing a 24-hour readathon in the past you know I am not hardcore when it comes to my readathons I need my sleep and I actually have never tried the timer method where anytime you pick up a book you have a timer going and I honestly don't know if that's the right route to take with this video but we're gonna try it it's honestly gonna take me longer than this readathon is because it's only a weekend and this readathon is extra special because it's for one of my best friend Rachel's birthday she wanted to host a Taylor Swift themed readathon. Her book club is actually called No Body No Crime. And because it's her birthday month, what better way to host a readathon? So I'm going to be participating this weekend. And I also realized why not do a 24 hour readathon? I haven't done one in quite a while and you guys seem to love those videos. But to kick things off, I'm going to share with you the four books I'm going to attempt to read within 24 hours. And I think this is doable with the timer method because I typically listen to audio at 2.5 or two times speed somewhere in there so I feel like at that speed each of these books is probably going to be four hours or no longer than four and a half at least that's what I'm hoping for so I'm going into this very confident but I might get seven hours in and just completely scrap this timer I have no idea how it's gonna go but honestly I'm just stoked to get into more thrillers again because I read four thrillers last month and loved just about all of them and these four books are currently at the top of my mystery thriller TBR so I'm extra excited to share with you what I'm gonna be reading so we do have four prompts for this I chose a book for each prompt but again we're just gonna see how this goes the first prompt is an isolated setting and I chose Never Lie by Frida McFadden if you've been around here recently you know I have a new obsession with Frida McFadden I eat up her books they're usually less than 300 pages the audio is three hours or so and they are just incredible I don't know how she puts out so many books but this one's also Rachel's favorite and it is about a couple that moves to a new house they're planning to buy a house they go to visit one snowy night and they get stranded there and they slowly uncover that this psychiatrist used to live in this house because she has a giant portrait on her wall but she was also murdered I think she was murdered in this house so I'm very scared <laughs> I feel like this one's gonna be spooky and because I know I'm just gonna eat this one up quickly I feel like it is a good place to start we then have a new release and this was a new release I think back in December so it's fairly new and this one is called that's not my name by Megan Lawley I think this one was actually a book club choice for young adults with Barnes and Noble obviously because it's young adults you're gonna fly through this it's not very long and there's not many words on each page either so I thought this would be the perfect choice for a readathon shivering and bruised a teen wakes up on the side of a dirt road with no memory of how she got there or who she is the police don't know where she came from until a frantic man arrives at the station he's been searching for her for hours he has her school ID her birth certificate and even family photos he is her father her name is Mary or so he says I love the lost memory kind of trope in thrillers I think it's fun to kind of put the pieces together along with the character so I'm really looking forward to this one the next prompt is your favorite trope and I have a lot of favorite tropes but this one has two of them I'm gonna be reading listen for the lie by Amy Tintera this is one of my most anticipated thriller reads of the year two things this is a psychological thriller which is my favorite and also there are podcast elements to this we have a girl whose best friend was murdered and this girl is accused of murdering her best friend but the funny thing is she doesn't remember if she murdered her best friend or not and I've been seeing such great things about this and it's making me so excited to dive in so I think this might be my second book that I pick up and last but not least we have the prompt of good for her or revenge and I decided to choose what lies in the woods by Kate Alice Marshall now I read no one can know or shall I say I read half of it and I DNF'd it but I'm willing to give her a second shot because I've heard everyone likes this one 10 times more. I honestly don't know much about this one. It says they were 11 when they sent a killer to prison. They were heroes, but they were liars. I think this is about girls that get lost in the woods during the summer and they're trying to uncover this serial killer or something like that. I have no idea. I really do love Kate Alice Marshall's writing, but for whatever reason, I could not push through her other thriller because of the content. So I'm hoping that if I give her a second chance, she'll be able to win me over with this one. 
one. I forgot to tell you guys that today is Friday and yesterday the readathon actually started so it goes from a Thursday to a Sunday. But I did not have much time to read yesterday. I had a photo shoot but what I did read when I got home is I read 50 pages of this so I did log 45 minutes already which honestly isn't the greatest way to start off a readathon but I was just thankful that I was able to get a little bit in last night even though I was exhausted and I can confirm this one is spooky and I think I know what's happening already. I could be completely wrong. It may be so obvious and the author's trying to mislead you because of how obvious it is, but I don't know. So this is our first choice. This is what I'm reading. Like I said, I think I'm probably going to read this one next because I believe it is the longest one. Read this one and hopefully I can still fit in What Lies in the Woods. But like I said, I don't know how long it's actually gonna take me to log 24 hours. Without further rambling, let's just go ahead and dive into the reading. Rachel actually has reading sprints tonight for four hours and reading sprints tomorrow night for four hours so I will definitely be joining those to get some reading time in. I'm super excited to hang out with some friends. I feel like it's been forever since I've done sprints publicly. I typically do them on my Patreon once every week but it's been a while since I've done them publicly. So I'm very excited to read thrillers, celebrate Rachel, and get this party started. Hello besties. I have a reading update. We did sprints last night for four or four and a half. I think even five hours. Hours, but I did complete Never Lie this morning and we have a total of three hours and 34 minutes and 29 seconds into this readathon and I've already completed one book. But this book was the perfect way chef's kiss to kick off a readathon. Like I said before, Freedom McFadden books are very quick. They're very easy to understand. Whether you're tired or not, I feel like you're just going to eat her books up. So this was definitely the way to go. And I think I'm going to land on a four for this. This one. The Housemaid so far I think still stands as my favorite as a four and a half but I feel like most of her books are gonna be like a four for me. This one was just so much fun. It was very formulaic. You kind of thought you knew what was happening. You were seeing obvious signs and then you're like wait well that's too obvious and I don't know why I ever doubted her in the first place. I was like oh I have this figured out. It's not gonna throw me off but let me tell you two times I was thrown off. I don't know how I didn't put two and two together. Like she was honestly kind of genius. We did get that like creepy kind of stifling isolated feeling since this couple is stuck at this home that they're trying to buy during a snowstorm. So honestly I feel like this would be perfect to read in the winter time which I was not expecting but I was totally okay with that because it definitely added to the stressful parts. There was two things that were screaming at me in my face the whole time that are my only two complaints which I actually feel like are very similar themes or things that happen in other mystery thrillers. One of them being the gaslighting kind of narcissistic husband. We have our main character Trisha who is clearly telling her husband and showing him just how worried she is that there is someone in this house with them and he's like oh no it's fine or he's sleeping soundly at night and she's up all night long and like trying to convince him that there's someone in this house and he just does not believe her. He keeps brushing her off it was so aggravating. We do not love a gaslighting husband. And also the psychiatrist Adrian, she made some really stupid, unbelievable, like dumb, dumb, dumb decisions where I was like, oh my word. Only in horror or mystery thriller books do you see people act this way. And it was just so aggravating. Things would go wrong and I'm like, girl, just call the police. Like there's nothing more important right now than your safety. But overall the pacing was perfect because Frida's books are so short. She doesn't have a lot of time to mess around or create all these details or this extra fluff. But I love that her writing is so simple. I mean, obviously it's simple and simple to follow because she does write for brain injury patients which I think is super cool but this one was nothing short than fantastic. I don't think I'm ever gonna rate one of her books like less than three or three and a half stars but again I just cannot believe I doubted her thinking that she was gonna play nice in this book because her other books have gotten pretty gory as well and I also strangely got you vibes which I don't think that's really spoiling anything but she does have a patient that's like stalking her and it's really creepy and like he has cameras and he's watching her. 
So that just gave me like weird stalker vibes. I loved this. Great start to the readathon. But I do know my next book choice, which is going to be Listen for the Lie by Amy Tintera. I do believe this is on Everand, and I haven't actually looked at the page count. I think this will go by pretty quickly. So we'll just see what happens. But I'm very eager to get into this one. I've been looking forward to this one since I've had it in my hands and just waiting for the perfect time to pick it up. And I feel like that time is now. So I will update you guys a little bit later maybe around like a third of the way or maybe when I finally hit the halfway point. Hi friends, it is late. My camera is also flashing red so this is going to be a very quick update. It is now 10 40. I've showered, I've changed, I've done sprints. I'm still hoping to read a lot the rest of the night but I'm already 100 pages in to listen to the lie and I think there is one of two things going on which I'm not gonna say because it could be a potential spoiler but if I'm right and I called it this early I think I'm actually gonna be kind of angry <laughs> that I figured it out. I wasn't even trying to sit here and be a detective. It just came to my mind. And I also feel like a couple things made it really obvious. So I'm very curious to see if I'm gonna be right. And if I am, that might affect my star rating. But I'm just gonna read the first sentence to you because this is just so funny. It's kind of like dark humor. A podcaster has decided to ruin my life, so I'm buying a chicken. There's just so many funny one-liners in this to kind of offset like the dark topic we're trying to explore, and it's just a very interesting contrast, so I am thoroughly enjoying this. I'm officially four hours and 58 minutes in. I'm actually listening to this on 2.5 times speed, but I may have to slow it down just a little bit because I am getting tired, but we're gonna continue on with our reading. Those are my only thoughts right now, but I don't know if I'm getting that five-star feeling, so we will just see how this goes. very sad news to report. Do you see this timer? It's literally at zero. I woke up this morning to my phone having restarted itself because there was apparently an iOS update overnight that I was not aware of, which completely reset my timer. Luckily though, I did take a screenshot, so I know I was exactly at 10 hours and 38 minutes, but oh my gosh, I am so upset. <laughs> I am literally gonna have to restart this over again and that's so unsatisfying, but it's fine. We're gonna continue this vlog because it is what it is and apparently the timer gods were not on my side. But since I've talked to you all last, I've done quite a bit of reading, including finishing Listen for the Lie already. I could not put this down, but let me just say I unfortunately do not understand the hype with this one and I am shocked. I'm actually floored that I'm saying that, that I'm actually teetering on like a three or four star. I definitely thought I was going to give this one a five, but let me just go back to the beginning and walk you through my thoughts as I was reading this. Starting with the roller coaster that this author takes you on, I have never second guessed myself or the suspect or what's going on ever as much as I did in this book. I literally got whiplash and went back and forth so many times on did she kill her best friend? Did she not? 
maybe this person did it, maybe her friend's still alive, who even knows? So that part was so well done because you would get confirmation or denial basically in all of these podcast episodes. Because of the snarkiness of our main character and the small town Texas feel or vibe of this book, it honestly felt like a cozy mystery, but only for like the first half of the book. My favorite character was even the grandma to Lucy, who is our main character in this book, and she was hilarious. She had no filter. It seriously reminded me of a grandma or a side character from an actual cozy mystery. She had me actually laughing out loud, and it takes a lot for a book to make me do that, but I just wanted to tap this book. I honestly should have, because there were so many great moments, but I'm still so conflicted on what to rate this, and I'm so upset because, ah, uh, I just wanted to love it so much more because there were so many great elements to this. The pace was absolutely phenomenal. I could not stop reading this. Like physically, I put off eating dinner until 9.30 p.m. because I physically could not put this book down. I also loved the friendship dynamic. You obviously get a lot of these two characters' relationship and you kind of go back in time and discover that. And to me, it almost reminded me of Dead to Me. If you guys have seen that show before, it just reminds me of like the sarcasm and the dark humor but also having best friends that whole dynamic together just reminded me of that show there is two pretty big trigger warnings in here which if you don't want to hear you can skip ahead a couple seconds but i feel like in mystery thrillers people just need to know because there's always a lot of heavy topics that the author feels like they have to use the first one is cheating which i absolutely despise i hate i avoid any books with cheating in them so that was a big disappointment there was also abuse and a lot of it was on page so that was really hard to read. So if you are sensitive at all to either of those topics, I would definitely tread lightly going into this one, and I feel like we need to make it more common to share trigger warnings. But the main reason why my rating is lower for this is because in the very beginning, I think I told you there are a couple ways that I thought this book was going to go, and it didn't go either one of those ways, but if it had gone my way, I would have been way more satisfied with the ending. So essentially, I overcompensated, and I disappointed in myself because I was thinking too much about it. I actually buddy read this with my friend Elizabeth and we both did the same exact thing. We were theorizing the whole way. We even finished this book within like the same hour of each other and it was incredibly fun to do that but I just find it very interesting that even though everybody's rating this five stars nobody talks about how disappointing the end is. So I will get off my soapbox, take all of that with a grain of salt if you will, but I was just very disappointed with this one so I feel like I should just stick to my Frida McFadden because for whatever reason she never disappoints. But another book that I decided to start on a whim so that way I can listen to it during the week while I work because yes this is taking me so much longer than just a weekend. I've only clocked in ten and a half hours and I finished two books which is good but I also was able to clock in a couple more hours while I was cleaning yesterday and I started the reappearance of Rachel Price. I will say that my track record with Holly Jackson isn't great. I read A Good Girl's Guide to Murder when it first came out. Didn't really like it enough to continue with the series. Plus, I'm just terrible with series. And I wasn't really looking forward to this one until my friends Rachel and Elizabeth both read it and they said it was really good and it was just incredible. I should give it a try. So I've been listening to this on audio. I think I'm about two hours into it and it is really good. It's basically about this high school student named Annabelle who's doing this documentary with this filming company and her mother disappeared a long time ago when she was very young. I think this happened about 10 or so years ago and they're just now making a documentary on it because most of the family has finally agreed to film and be a part of this. So we are kind of going back in time and then we're in the present and there's just so many different cool elements to this and we're getting more new characters added in and high stakes moments and it's just really well done. Like the audio is great. I typically almost always tandem read with a physical book but I'm very much enjoying this. But right now it honestly feels like it could be a possible five star, which is probably the biggest turn of events for this video. I am going to go ahead and start That's Not My Name. I'm really excited to read this one because no one I personally know has read this, but I do know it was a book club pick for Barnes & Noble, so obviously that must mean something good, but I feel like this could be a hidden gem where I can encourage you all to read it even though no one else is really talking about it. But I'm very excited to dive into this one and see if it will redeem Listen for the Lie. Hi besties, I am back with an update. And I am excited to tell you I have now clocked in 16 hours for this 24-hour readathon. And I only have one more hour left of 
of That's Not My Name and I'm kind of excited for this to be over. I'm not hating it, but it's definitely feeling like a three star. There's just something about young adult that doesn't hit the same that adult mystery thrillers do. And this one is just like, okay, I'm intrigued and I honestly have no idea where it's gonna go. So that's a good thing. But I'm starting to get annoyed with a couple things. The first one being the police in this book. They do not give a crap that this girl has gone missing, that she could possibly be dead. They've stopped looking for her. So this teenage boy essentially is looking for his missing girlfriend and the police aren't listening to him when he's giving them all of the evidence that he's not the one that like killed her or anything like that. And he is just an angry person because of it. And so it's getting slightly angsty and a little bit too annoying to the point where I just don't like his point of view. But then we have another point of view of this girl whose name is supposedly Mary who finds herself in a ditch and there's this guy that comes and has pictures of her, claims to be her father, but of course she has no recollection or no memory of anything whatsoever. She doesn't recognize the guy, she's slowly learning about herself, and apparently her dad fed her eggs when she's allergic to them. And then they go to a diner and he orders her this massive strawberry smoothie, which apparently she's also allergic to strawberries, and it's just really weird. Something sketchy is going on. They're also renting or staying in like this cabin that's at this remote location because apparently their house, their flooring is being redone, which is a very odd reason to not be able to stay in your own house. There's just some sketchy weird stuff going on with this guy and our main character Mary is finally figuring all of that out. She's like, this is really weird. He even bought her like children's clothing. It's intriguing, but also it's very slow. Like I have this much left of the book and I feel like, I mean, there's stuff happening, but I just can't put the pieces together and it's keeping me guessing. But for now, that's where we're at in this one. But I have been listening to the new Holly Jackson book and I'm 25% of the way through and I am loving it. It's like a five star for me so far, enough to the point where I put it on pause to wait to get the physical book from Amazon. And that has not happened to me in a hot minute where I feel like a book is an easy five stars for me. Her mom went missing like a decade ago and then she shows up and there's some really sketchy things happening. Her mom seems to be completely fine and normal after everything that's happened to her. So we're slowly just uncovering the story with our main character Annabelle. But I have this feeling that after reading these two, I will probably be close to the 24 hour mark. We're getting there guys. We're getting really close. But yeah, that is my update for now and I will let you guys know when I finally finish this one.
we're done we did it i finished two more books and honestly i could not be happier but i'm just here to give you a full wrap up and thoughts on the books i read during these 24 hours i think last time i updated you guys i was like two-thirds of the way through this and happy to say that i did finish it but i'm not happy to say i think i'm landing on a three stars with this one honestly i feel like that was a big plot twist for me i was going into this one with such high hopes considering it has like a 4.2 or a 4.4 like overall average rating on goodreads but this just felt very mediocre for me and i think i'm just learning that sometimes it's not the best way to gamble on young adult mystery thrillers specifically unless i've heard from trusted sources or friends i just don't think i'm going to take a gamble anymore on this specific genre for me specifically it was just very lackluster by the end this book is basically nothing i haven't seen before which is why i'm rating it an average rating was the writing bad for a debut definitely not but i feel like there could have been some different ways the author could have executed it to really make the end just end with a huge bang yes we did get an emotional ending and the male main character that i was very frustrated with because he was just angry all the time i did end up feeling for him a little bit towards the end so i feel like my feelings did change we did get an emotional ending like you don't typically get with mystery thrillers so i was pleasantly surprised about that aspect the author did a really great job of keeping you reading the whole time i definitely can't complain the writing was captivating but something about the storyline was just too basic for my taste and i definitely feel like i was slowly predicting what was happening and that's why i just wasn't impressed with the ending also there was a lot of language in this that's just like a personal preference or maybe i just wasn't aware that that much language was being put into young adult books these days i don't know i can recommend it to beginner mystery thriller readers and if you just want something really quick i think the audio was less than three hours for me but overall i'm just gonna be passing this one on next i finally finished the reappearance of rachel price and let me just say even though i was very disappointed by this young adult thriller i was not let down with this one but reading this book actually makes me want to go back and reread that other series because this was incredible my only complaint are two very small things first of all again the language in this i just was not expecting that number two does a mystery thriller especially a young adult really need to be 430 pages long like it kind of drug a little bit yes it was very engaging the entire way through but i felt like she really could have cut down things quite a bit especially because i did not not pick up on anything that was happening so she was dropping subtle hints throughout the whole book like I definitely was not catching on. I love when a book just drops multiple plot twists by the ending like that was probably my favorite part. The ending was great. There was one part of the ending that I didn't really love which is why I think I'm gonna land on a 4.5. It just wasn't quite a 5. So if I was going to recommend you a young adult mystery thriller one of these over the other it would definitely be this one. But overall I loved our main female lead. I feel like she didn't make any stupid dumb decisions that made me angry with her. Sometimes that happens in mystery thrillers. And Holly Jackson wrote a great book with Keeping You Guessing. Like I said, I had no clue what in the world was going on. My brain and my wheels just kept turning and this was such a great book. So I am so happy that I decided to pick this one up. So overall, just a little bit of a roundup. I finished Never Lie and ended up giving this one four stars. I love Frida McFadden and this one definitely didn't let me down. I feel like this is probably going to end up being one of my favorites of hers. And I finished Listen for the Lie by Amy Tintera, and I'm sad to say I was disappointed by this one. I still really don't know what I want to rate it because I feel like it was better than this one, and I'm rating this one a three, so maybe this one's like a three and a half or a four. I don't know. I just, I'm still sitting on this one because the first half was in Incredible. And then by the last fourth, it just was very lackluster. I loved the way it was written. It was dark, it was humorous, and it was just a really good combination. And then of course we have the three star and the four and a half star, like I said, which means that I completed all four of these mystery thrillers. I think the biggest plot twist of this video for me is that I ended up loving this one more than any of these. The one that I just take a gamble on and start ends up being the win of the video. So if I can recommend any of these, Obviously, Frida's always a win, but this one especially was incredible. Well, that is all I have for this video. I feel like it was definitely a success. Not a perfect reading video where I have 
all five stars, but that's okay. Let me know what kind of theme you would like to see me do if I do another one of these. And let me know if you've read any of these books. They're all fairly new releases. So I'd love to hear if you've read any of these and if you love them as well. Thank you once again for clicking on this video and hanging out with me. I love you guys so much and I will see you in my next video.